dancing, singing, and acting make up the chief ingredient for the theater. Our next report takes a special look at the theatrical scene in Nigeria. Don't go away. Theatre in Nigeria enjoyed a boom during the pre-independent era. Groups including ones led by the satiric Hubert Ogunde, the famed Adi Love and Ishola Ogunshola, popularly called Aisho Pepe, took the stage around provinces within Nigeria and even across West Africa. We had um, that flourish of writers, that, you know, uh, the, the pantheon of our early writers. You know, you're talking about um, people like um, uh, Wally Shoinka, J.P. Clark, uh, um, and then the younger ones, Oshofison, you know, they all came in. And, you know, so there was that, that there, was, there, there was a lot of energy around, you know, um, uh, just before independence, independence, and, you know, early post-independence. We have the National Theatre, fantastic. I was in England when this was built, in Nigeria here, I was so happy. I told everybody because at that time I was working at the, um, the National Theatre of Great Britain. At that particular time. They were very happy, you know, and they heard about the, uh, the, first, the first act, 77. They saw pictures, they saw pictures, they, saw, they were very happy. They said, good, very good, you know. They were, they were even uh, hopeful that we will arrange some tours between the two okay. countries, you know. I said, we have the history to back us up. Theatre continues to boom post-independence until the advent of television in 1959. The tension solves extended military rule in the country, plus some of the adjustment programs inevitable caused the stage curtains to fall and the theatre doors to shut. And the time we're talking about is the period when we had just come out of uh, uh, the Black World Festival. Nigeria was on the world map. You know, and uh, the, the, the example we set, very, very difficult to match, let alone surpass. And uh, we, were, we thought we were ready to, to fly, you know. But unfortunately, socially, things were getting worse. By 7 o'clock, everyone had to make their way home. Why? Because there were armed robbers. Even at home, at that time, you were getting letters from armed robbers. So you want to find out if there was any letter so you could move out before they moved in. And so we have all this to contend with. I, I, I do know that in the early 80s there was a, there was a lot of vibrancy at the, at the National Theatre. The, you know, plays were being consistently put on at the National Theatre. But then, you know, the constant advent of military incursion into into the polity, I think also affected um, people's um, disposable income. And so going out to the theater and all that started going down. And so the, we, we lost quite a lot of our audience. Uh, uh, don't be annoyed. Your brother did not own anything. <laughs> It's not everything that is smaller than you that they are bigger than. 
It became a tough period for actors until precious Nollywood provided a timely outlet. Someone will not come and die because of marriage. Shut up before I put your hand You know, for most, for most practitioners, you are interpreters, you are interpreters of work. And, you know, you do find, too, that there's more, um, it's, uh, theater is more intellectual than film. You know, you do. F it's not as if you don't find intellectual films, but theatre tends to be even more intellectual, more um, uh, analytical of the society in, within which it lives. And you know, for a lot of people, going to the theatre, apart from being entertaining, is very thought-provoking. With entertainment gradually finding its feedback in the country, stage practitioners can no longer ignore the yearns for a live audience. And the entertainment, the atmosphere is fantastic. And I remember what it was like in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and so on. And when it started going down, you know. So when I went back, I played, I played on the stages. Uh, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. I was, I, was, I was very pleasantly surprised. If it continues like this, we'll have our theater back. It's I know it's a How did you get it? In America, in Trump. The adventurous younger actors who have already earned rave reviews on the big screens are also looking to the stage. You'll be fine. Uh, can I help you? TV kind of makes you a bit lazy when it comes to memory, um, memorizing lines. You just memorize enough for that scene, and once it's gone, that's it. But stage, you have to remember every single line. Any, any idiot can just read lines and memorize lines. You do not memorize lines. You learn lines. <laughs> There is, however, a little problem. The seats are taking time to fill. At the moment, it's still, it's, it's still pretty ad hoc. And the, the, and the reason for that is very simple. There's, we really have no home for the theater right now in, in Lagos. I can speak for Lagos. Um, the place we should be using, the National Theater, because it was allowed to run down. Very much, yes, for a very long time, and so it, you, you lost the catchment crowd that used to come there. It's lost its sense of, I mean, appeal. people, yes, the sense of appeal, and people don't feel that secure. So we need to, to um, resell it to our audience as a destination for theatre. Now, more than ever, there appears to be a concerted effort to rejuvenate the stages in the country. The response isn't as encouraging at the moment, but the thoughts of a vibrant theatre across the country, with a population of more than 160 million people, is enough motivation to keep the actors soldiering on.